and Jason Mans. Hello, Vancouver. Uh, I was talking to these guys backstage, and I, I don't want to let the cat out of the bag, but they said you guys might have been the best crowd they've ever played for. I don't know. That's what I heard.
my god. But I mean, it was the last time he had a good tempo solo. It's been a while. On the lead guitar. Playing the Gibson today. He's the secret weapon of Loud and Swain. Guitar and virtuoso. Billy Moran. Yeah, we had a whole uh, system of hand signals to let me know who's backstage, who's not. Uh, this that was, was like, this was. They're both back there, and this was going to be Mark's back there. This is going to be Ruth is back there. <laughs> so I'm getting the Ruth's back there, and then I'm getting Mark is walking. <laughs> All, right. All right, so let's bring what? up. Does that mean I can start without him? Yeah, but we're gonna, we're going to do the song first, ladies and gentlemen. It's Ruth Connell. She's a black magic woman. She's a black magic woman. She's a black magic woman. Got me so blind that I can't see. <laughs> she's a black magic woman. And she's gonna make a devil of me and my Have you ever seen such a vicious robot in your whole life? It's cruel. It's cruel, Robot Mike. It's cruel. It's Halloween Robot Mike. <laughs> okay, guys, it's time to play uh, the theme song for our other guest that's going to join Ruth Connell. Marker? Black Magic Woman. Oh, sorry, I thought it was Black Magic Marker. There's <laughs> a great music joke there. You know, Carlos Santana passed out the gig recently. You know why? You know what happened? What? Played a chord by accident. <laughs> so it's a music joke. <laughs> Carlos Santana doesn't play chords. <laughs> you got it. They got it. We got it. We got it. We got it. I got it. We 
go to. Um, hey, you know, Rob, I love the hair. Thanks, man. You're know, 10 years younger. <laughs> Love it. Thanks. Great. It's great to see you. Hey guys, I missed you. Missed you. Nice shiny new drum kit. I'm excited. It was really loud. My God. Stop <laughs> complaining. We're drummers. We make noise. I know you awesome. make a lot of noise. I know you do. This is going to be like my mom. In more ways than one. <laughs> uh, we're going to leave you alone with this awkward family reunion. <laughs> Bye. Bye. Wish me luck. Does that make you my dad? Kind of. <laughs> Tell me <laughs> Every couple of weeks oh, or so. There you go. Hey guys! <laughs> nice to be back. <laughs> nice to be back. Ooh, all right, fine. <laughs> oh, you're so familiar with me. It's terrible. What's going on? What are we doing? Oh, we have to answer some questions, but I don't oh, really? see anyone queued up. It's weird. It's like they're scared of you or something. No. <laughs> oh, right. Oh, my God. So there's people over there. There's people over there. Oh. Oh. They're what's... waiting. It's the line for the bathroom. What's... <laughs> what's your name? Where are you from? What do you want? Hi. Are you doing my bits now? That's my bit. That's my bit. It's it. my bit. What do you want? Hi there. What's your name? Hurry up. My name is Monica, and I've met you before. Um, I missed that you haven't been in Vancouver for a while, but I remember a few years ago. It was raining. What can I say? It rained sometimes. Uh, but a few years ago, you were here, and I believe your daughter was in the audience, and you were carrying her around. <laughs> And that was a lot of years ago. Years ago. So there was a, this is, do you ever see the video of that? So She's I put, taller than me now. So she is. <laughs> I put the microphone in her face. She was looking at everybody. I put the microphone in her face. She just goes. So put it back. She goes. Who are these people and what do they want? I, honestly, I, I promise you, I did not know you did that. I promise you, I did not know you did that. It was that. the sweetest thing. It was the sweetest thing. Uh, well, she's hand operated. It's like a puppet. So, no. If it's good. If it's not good, I don't want to know. But go on. You want to ask her a question or me a question? I'll ask you a question. Oh. Since you're standing right here. So my question is, now that your daughter is getting older, how are you going to introduce, you, to introduce her to your career as being an evil Crowley? Or evil? Where'd you get the idea of being evil? <laughs> what is wrong with you? A cool sterling. In leverage, Sorry. which you were. Yeah, but you do know I, I, I'm currently doing two shows where I'm, I'm a good guy in both. It's kind of crazy. Are you though? Are you? Shut up, you. <laughs> Doom Patrol. She loves Doom Patrol. You know why she loves Doom Patrol? Because we have zombie weir butts. There's nothing better than zombie weir butts to make a six year old go, that's cool. <laughs> but my daughter is in love with Chris Pratt. So she literally will go up to the screen and go kiss the screen whenever he's on. She goes, I love him. I'm like, can't I be your hero at least for 10 minutes? She's like, no, Chris Pratt. I'm like, yeah, whatever. Do you let her watch any Supernatural episodes that you've been in? Uh, she's actually, she's really smart. So she understands the difference between, like, she did ask me the other day. She goes like, so when you shoot somebody, I'm like, excuse me? <laughs> so they like just disappear? Or do they just fall over? Are they dead? I'm like, well, it depends on what you shoot them with. I'm talking about the ballistics of bullets and stuff. Because she's that kind of kid. She goes, oh, okay. They don't just disappear. I was like, no. So that's just when I click my finger. Then. Exactly. It's, you got that from me. <laughs> no, I, I was doing you. I was meaning with you. That's when they oh, oh, okay. I was just checking. Just checking. But now that it's like, there's, a, there's some kids grow up with the idea that... Um, that it's make believe, and they know if you know if, you, if you've got extended family members and stuff, the ones that go like, yeah, yeah, you kill people on television, so it's not a, they're not scared of you in that context. But it's as long as they can separate real from, from uh, fantasy. <laughs> Next. You mean this isn't all real? Oh gosh. You want to go play drums? I can really wake you up. Okay. You can play drums. Are you trying to hear? Norman might not like it. No, I'm going to let you play drums. Go on. I want to see what you do. Give me the mic. It was Mark's idea, right? It wasn't yeah. my idea. No one won't kill you. Okay. He's having a sandwich right now. He's fine. Here, give me that. 
Go on, Em. You'll do anything to get there me you off go. the mic. Right, so you can make as much noise as you want. Now you know how loud it is up there. It's pretty loud, no? Look how shiny they are. It's like I'm like a magpie. That's actually a lot of fun. It is fun. <laughs> so you get all the, all the negative energy out. It's kind of good. But you do need little earplugs in to protect your little shell like ears. Well, years ago they invented something called in-ear monitors and, and Billy and, 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 and uh, Rob and, and Borjo were like, you need to try these and I have years of hitting drums, right? And I put these things in, I was able to turn my volumes down by about 40%. And now you can hear everything, which is just the most fantastic thing. And just annoy everybody else. <laughs> what do you want? That was good. Honestly, though, can we just talk about it for a minute? That was quite satisfying. It is really satisfying. <laughs> now I know why you drum. Exactly. <laughs> you smack the shit out of things. Exactly. Life's simple. And people are happy about it. <laughs> Sometimes. <laughs> Listen, guy. What do you want? Is this side? Is this side? The oh, is that side? Oh, you've got two sides! Two sides to every Sorry. story, Mark. Two sides to every nice story. Nicely lit, too. What's your name? Where are you from? Um, my what name. do you want? <laughs> <laughs> you were here yesterday, right? My name is Berkeley. Berkeley? That's a nice name. Thank you. Um, I'm from Idaho in the States. It's not very um, oh, it is to me. I went there once, it was closed. <laughs> that sounds about right. Um, so my question is for both of you. Um, what was your favorite scene, or like, what scene, like, did you guys, like, laugh the most, like, filming together? We talked about this yesterday, but I'm going to repeat myself because it was my favorite in a lot of ways. The end of season 11, you took one of the red things from the float, like, and you made it into a clown nose. Oh, God. And we did the whole scene. Rob was up in the plinth trying to keep a straight face. Jared he was up high, wasn't he? He was all up high. Jared had his finger through Misha's pants. It was all... <laughs> oh, wait, the no. wheels were my, coming my, off the train. My favourite moment when we were together was when Misha opened his shirt. <laughs> And what was written on his chest. That was hilarious. We laughed for, what, an hour? We laughed for about an hour, and all the executives from the network were happened to pick that one day to come on set. And Misha had read the script, which is said, on your chest it will say, I'm coming. <laughs> Hadn't put two and two together. Opens his shirt on set like this. We're helpless. We're like, oh my God. We were trying not to make the connection for it an was, hour. It was so funny, and I have to say, it was the, one of the first times I was ever brave enough to make a joke. Um, we were just kind of calming down, we were about to go for a take, and the, you know, the laughter was kind of dying down, and somebody said again, like, I'm coming, <laughs> and, <laughs> and I went, well, I'm close. <laughs> Was a, that was a very long scene, if I remember. That took a long time to shoot. My favourite, and always been my favourite, was the end of season eight. When we did the end of season eight, we happened to be... Uh, the scene starts with uh, uh, Elena's character, with me tied to a chair, that ends up, you know, all the way through to Angels Falling, which is just this extraordinary thing. We shot the exterior in the worst weather I've ever seen. Um, and the boys went through the window and all this stuff, but... And then the next two days, we were on set in sequence, and we shot the whole piece in sequence. And it was just one of the most amazing times. I was talking to Jared about this. He goes, I think some of the best stuff we ever did. It was terrific watching. I saw that episode before I auditioned. That was one of the episodes I watched. And I remember it. I mean, I can still see, see, see moments from it. And to, to be able to shoot in sequence is quite rare. Right? It is. It is. And... On Walker Independence, which we're shooting right now, there is there is a. Uh... You guys seen it yet? Oh, there is a huge episode coming up on Thursday. You're gonna love it. It's so much fun. I'm having so much fun doing this. But 
when they can, they will shoot sequences in sequence because it's great to be able to build on what you've done. Because, you know, when, listen, when, you, when you're making TV, right, you can't shoot a scene in the Men of Letters that's on in scene three and then do the rest of the episode and then come back in scene 20 and shoot the Men of Letters again. You have to shoot scene three and 20 at the same time because it's not cost effective to keep moving. You're there, you've got to do it, you finish everything that goes there. So the luxury of having great writers that will write you stuff that actually carries you through story. And it always makes it better, doesn't it? It always, always, always makes it better. Some of our best stuff has been when we've had chunks. Lock shooting, whole chunks. And... Yeah, it's wonderful to do. We love it. But season, season eight, the end of season eight is great. Although I did like the end of season nine. You do know that Jared and Jensen were drinking at the last <laughs> day. It was the last day of the series, of, the, of their season, the series they got in England. But... It, the last day of season nine, and there was the Demon Dean moment. And so, I, I can't confirm or deny this, you'll have to ask Jensen whether he was drinking at the time. I'd like, I'd like him to confirm when he wasn't. <laughs> <laughs> so he's in the bed, and Tom, Tom Roy is going like, all I see is you in the silhouette in the doorway, the rest of it's up to you. So I found where I was, I found the chair, and it all turned into this little Lincoln Memorial thing. And it's this huge speech about, you know, let's go take a howl of that moon. And I go, I'm halfway through the speech, and he literally sits up, bolt upright, and screams in my face. <laughs> I, I, I peed a little. It was one of those days. But yeah, this, this hilarity ensued. What do you want? Hi, I'm Karen. Sorry, Seattle. who are you? Where are you from? <laughs> What's your social security number? That's actually what I move on to. Uh, so. So I'm Karen from Seattle, and I gotta tell you, Mark. Well, the weather's the same. I have seen you at other cons for Supernatural um, years ago in Seattle, and you are like my fave. You're so good with the audience, and I got. I hate you, them all. You know that, right? I just love you. I was so excited that you were here today. Oh. Um, well, you, you, you have the coronavirus to thank for that. Well, and during the coronavirus, I saw you, because I watched everything there was on Earth, I saw you play a million things from Star Trek to Farscape to, you were in... Never on Farscape, but I love you. Oh, I'm sorry, what's the one with, Sarah, with Serenity? Oh, Firefly. Oh, sorry. <laughs> sorry. That's okay, I'm, I'm just messing with it. Anyway, um, my question to you is, you obviously have a lot of range, so... When you were in Supernatural, you played, you know, the King of Hell, the Crossroads Kisser, the Bootlicker, <laughs> Cheers guy. I mean, it was like everybody knows your name. You gave everybody nicknames. Now that's Cheers. So everybody so, knows my name is what, Cheers, right? What was your favorite part? Like, what when they wrote it in and you saw it, were you like, hell yeah? Which one was your favorite? Well, you know what? I've been really, really lucky over the years, as have we both, to do things that we love with people we love and. That's, it's just the most wonderful thing. You, you text I, thing? You... No, no, I'm doing something on purpose. Which you'll see in a second. So... Oh, I, can, I can see him. <laughs> things like this. <laughs> are the high spots of my life. Look, you know, we, I spent nearly a decade with, with this amazing group of people. And the, the, re, the way that it's been made better, I mean, a show's a show is a show. Rarely do you get this amount of people who really care about each other, who all support each other, from everybody, pre, post, crew, everybody. Everybody wants to make the best thing that they can make on this show. And we do this show, and we send this show out to you, and we don't get to see it. And we come out to places like this, which we've been doing for a long time now, and we, we get our audience, we get our audience back, and we get to share that experience with you, and it's the most wonderful, wonderful thing. There is it's the no closest to theatre you get on television. I've been saying that for, for, for years. It's like, we, we do TV in front of our friends. You know, and then post-production takes it, and makes it better, and makes it interesting, they put music on it, they do this stuff. And we come to this, and we do this, and we get to see your faces, and we get to see how you feel about it. I mean, it's such a tough we, job. We really get to see your faces when we go into the audience. You go for a walk. Yeah. You go for a walk. I, I, always, I, I usually do, honestly. I, I you usually... copying me? <laughs> Mother. 
Fergus was a four foot three ginger haired Scottish crafter. Blah, blah, blah. Yeah, 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 yeah. Hi. I can see at least three gingers. It's all good. Hi. 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 Sure, oh. people go. I love no her. reason. Short people go. No reason to. Can't even tell where I am. I'm, I'm so short. Burgess, Burgess. Where Burgess, are you? Burgess. I usually say, oh, thank Jesus. There's a remarkably big present for, presence for such a wee bit. Oh, we're twins. Hello. Who's next? I've seen three sets of twins this weekend. Three sets of twins? Yeah. Hi. Wow. Hi. Who's the next question? while she's doing my bit. Oh, we've got a friend of yours over here, Mark. Who? Is a child? Yes. Yeah, a, a cute, a very cute child. Come on, I'll come see you in a second. Okay, just here. What do you want? Uh, Who are you? What do you want? Uh, Tinder Bramble, so I wrote it down. But my name is Liz, and I'm... You had to write that down? I did. <laughs> Mark, but yeah, I'm from Washington State. I'm terribly sorry. <laughs> I've just been there, and I like it. It's okay, it's just kind of raining. Oh, there you are. Uh, coming from where y'all hail from, is it that around the same? I live in Los Angeles. <laughs> He's a Yankee now. I am. No, well, yeah. Actually, it's more south than the south. Yeah. California is actually more south than most of the south. And yet, somehow, we're Yankees. They're goddamn Yankees. It's weird, isn't it? Damn Yankees. <laughs> That's a good musical. <laughs> damn Yankees. What do you want? Well... <laughs> Former Southerner, but I agree with that. Um, all right, so thank you all for giving us a show and fandom that we can draw strength, re revelation, and inspiration from. You give us this fantastical world where we can draw parallels to our own traumas, <laughs> grief, victories, and fates. I know I have several ways I relate deeply. You and every artistic soul that ever touched Supernatural have given us a once in a generation series to distract us from all of life's problems. Personally, I suffer from a rare painful disorder, but no matter how long I'm bed bedridden, I know I'll always have a fandom, sorry, to entertain me and heroes to remind me to always keep fighting. Are you a fan of any works of art, performance or otherwise, that gets you through the tough days and has a special place in your heart? Absolutely, and first of all, welcome and you're amongst friends. Don't ever forget that. Well, you see, that was a beautiful question. You put it so beautifully, thank you. It was so lovely. But I don't trust anybody that's not a fan of something. It's, it's not, if you don't have any passion in your life and you don't have any, I mean, this, we, this used to be the guilty secret of everybody, right? To, to love a TV show. And uh, if you got dressed up or you, uh, you know, you dyed your hair red to look like some short actress on television. Um, or, you, or you put on a wig, or you did, or you dressed. You were, you were pilloried and laughed at. That's, that, that was not cool. I mean, it was cool to us, but it wasn't cool to them. And even now, if you watch like uh, San Diego News when the Comic Con's on, these people in suits sitting there going, yeah, all these weird people dressed up as furries uh, like walking down the street. And it's, it's, it's not true anymore. We got to the point where our voice counts, what we love and the energy that we put into what we love, what we want to watch. They can't just serve us stuff up anymore. The great example is Battlestar Galactica, right? The original, yeah! the original Battlestar Galactica, which is an incredible story, was taken and was literally used to try to rip off Star Wars fans. That was the era. Like, oh, Star Wars fans are like, it will do this, we'll do this, we'll do this. X amount of years later, Ron Moore goes, actually this story is really good and makes one of the best pieces of science fiction that's ever lived. So it's changing. So we have power. We have the ability to, to, to change what we see. We're voting with our, with, our, you know, with our thumbs, really. That's what it is. And I hate the, I, I've always hated the word fan. Fan is a revolting word. Fan is short for fanatic. Right? As George Santayana said, fanatic is one is right is one who redoubles his effort when he's lost sight of his aim. That's, that's a great definition of fanatic. So we, we agonized over this idea of supernatural fandom and, and fan this and fan that. And we actually, all of us pretty much hated that concept. 
and the word family came in. And because we have causes and we have things we believe in and we do these things that, that we really care about because we have this position. But then we've got the supernatural family who comes in behind it and makes it a million times bigger, makes it a thousand times bigger, makes it happen. This is a force for a lot of good, for a lot of compassion. You know, you've said part of what's going on in your life. Everyone put up, put their hands up who is, who's dealing with mental health issues right now, right? Physical health issues right now. You're not alone. And that's the most beautiful thing. You fall over at a supernatural convention, about 300 people will try to pick you up. <laughs> that's the point. So we, we love you, we genuinely do love you. This is an anomaly. This isn't what the way it used to be with TV shows. It's not the way this used to be. Absolutely, I agree with everything Mark has said. And just to answer from a little bit from my point of view, I'm a huge fan of so many things. I, I follow the ballet dancers. There's this Russian ballerina, Mara Shok. I, I, I just, I'm obsessed. I, I'm a massive fan of Tom Cruise and Top Gun. I it's because he's little. I know, it's he's little. I know. And it's, I, I saw Maverick like three times within the first. Um, but, but with with Maverick, and, and thank goodness that film was so successful for cinema, for everything. I don't know if you'd be able to have a convention around it in the way we do. Not unless they've been on episodes of Supernatural. Yeah. <laughs> there's if any of the actors have been on Supernatural, yeah, they can do a convention. There, there's something specific about this fandom, and the, and the bit that touched me, and I think touched Mark too, um, was when you said, for, you know, within this generation, and I was like, oh, I've not heard it contextualised in that way because I think Star Trek was one time, we're another, you know, and I, that was really lovely. So thank you for your question. Yeah, I yeah. felt like once a lifetime wasn't that accurate. It was definitely, it, it's lightning in a bottle. There but it, but it has evolved. For the fandom. But it has evolved. And yeah. the reason it's evolved is because of you guys. Yeah. That's, don't ever forget that, is that you, you're the force to get the things you love done. Yes. If it's crap, don't watch it. <laughs> Mark, I have a question for you. So, I'm still, I get teased, I'm still a fan. Like, I'm in Hollywood. I'm still like, oh, my. Patrick Dempsey was in a fish and chip shop. <laughs> I'm like, oh, I, I'll text someone and tell them. Like, are you, do you fan like that over anyone? In, Absolutely. Like, who, who was your last one? To meet recently. There's so many people, to see so many people. I got kissed by Smokey Robinson. I was in an airport lounge. I was in an, no, I was in an airport lounge. And, I, and Smokey Robinson sitting there, and I'm like, it's Smokey Robinson, I have to say something. So I went over and I said, Mr. Robinson, he got up and he goes, oh man, I love your work. I'm like, <laughs> you look about five words. years old right now. Oh, absolutely. It was amazing. It, it, his, his, his minder was like, who the hell is this boy? <laughs> he comes in, he grabs me and he gives me a kiss on the cheek. I smelled of his cologne for the whole day. <laughs> it's Smokey Robinson, you know? But like, yeah, I mean, there's so many people. When I, if I see something that I really enjoy, it doesn't matter what it is, or I hear something that I love, there's so many people I just go, I'm like, that's just fantastic. To be able to walk up to anybody, if you're genuine, if you walk up to somebody who you, you like, if you fake it, oh, I'm a big fan, and you're not, it never works. But if you really are appreciative of something, and you go up to that person and say, I really, you know, excuse me, so-and-so, I, I, I really love your work, thank you so much. 99 times out of 100, they're gonna turn around and go, wow, thank you, so I really appreciate that, thank you. And if they don't, you just walk away and never talk about them ever again. <laughs> but the truth is, it's like, that's, that's the greatest reward because we make this stuff without you. I get the lucky thing of coming to a convention, I get to see you, and I get to see your smiling faces, and your boos and jeers. Um, They're boos? What right, boos? They, they boo me. Boos? They boo me. Oh, boo. Yeah. If I'm really mean, see? <laughs> but if I'm really mean, they're like, Ooh. But that's the thing, is I get to see your faces. When we're making the show, I don't get to see your faces. I'm lucky. So when you go to see an actor or a dancer or you see somebody, they very rarely met their audience. So it's an amazing thing to be able to share that. And I'm happy to be a fan. I hope I never yeah. lose that excitement. No. If you don't have that, what if, what if 
I got I got my first cameo sent to me. Yeah? Yeah. Do you ever watch Friday Night Lights? Yeah. Great show. It was from one of the actors and the lady who works with me in cameo just got got him, Zach, to do my to do a cameo when I got a cameo. Were you giggling like a fool when you got it? <laughs> I love that. There's yeah. something, if, you're, if you're not, I don't trust anyone who's not a fan of something. I really don't. There's something wrong with you if you can't get excited by something. You know, it's like the naysaying. And it's just, you're in a very small world if you don't do that. But if you open your heart up and you go, yeah, that's cool. Your life changes, doesn't it? Hey, stranger. Howdy. Like your hair. Thank you. It's cool. <laughs> what? <laughs> Follow that. We're, we're disseminated down to one word. What? What? Three, it's not even a whole word, it's not a T, it's just like three letters. What? What? <laughs> Hi, um, I'm Shauna, I'm from Kelowna. Yeah. I know. <laughs> cool. Been there. Been there, done that, okay. Um, first, um, Mark, I love that your character in Walker Independence feels like a grown up badger. Like, <laughs> I've got this thing on Walker, right? This is really cool. I've got this thing on Walker. So Seamus Kevin Fahey, who runs the show, was on Battlestar. He was a writer on Battlestar. He's an amazing, amazing guy. And everybody, I love every single person on that set. It is a rare thing that you walk into a bunch of people who really like each other. And it shows. So, he's, so in, the, in the pilot, I've got this secret gig in the pilot, which ended up not being a secret, so we, we blew that. But... Um, <laughs> So there's a picture of me on the wall with a hat on, and I hate hats. I absolutely, I've got a head like a melon. I hate hats. So I'm like going, so he took a picture of me, and I've got this suit on, and I look like Willy Wonka. So I'll stop, and it's orange, and orange pants. I'm like going, and Seamus looks at you, are going to wear the hat? And I'm like, no. I look like Willy bloody Wonka. You sure you're not going to wear the hat? I'm like, no. He has now written something about hats into every <laughs> single episode of the town. He has paid me. Are you me carrying that. hats? Oh, there's hats a shot, there's, you're, there's a shot in episode two when I'm there and, and, and Katie Finley's character comes in and she's wonderful. She comes, she's like, she's almost like a daughter character to me. She runs my place for me. And I'm in there and I'm trying on hats, but I never put one on. And she's like, did you pick a hat? I'm like, no. <laughs> she's writing it into every episode. I, I can't tell you what happens, but if you watch next Thursday, you'll see some uh, beautiful hat stuff. You, do you put the hat on? Is that no, what never put a hat on. <laughs> it's a throwback to Battlestar to do with the cane. If you watch Battlestar, there's a gag with a cane. It's very, very important. Yeah. And Seamus is like, ah, we're doing the cane then. Okay. I like your skirt, by the way. It's really Thanks. Cool. Oh, sorry. <laughs> I'm wearing mine on the inside. I got it under the pants. Um. My question for you is just kind of a fun what-if thing. Um, if you were to cast, like, characterize and cast Crowley's dad, who would it be and Well, why? we... Yeah. Uh, we talked about, about, about this, didn't we, Mark? Are you talking about Fergus's dad or Crowley's dad? No, There's a massive difference. Well, we had, Crowley, Crowley is that is a New York, English New York literary agent. That's the meat suit. And the bastardization of the Fergus... Uh, hundreds of years of the, of, of the Fergus demon. Yeah, I I'd, I'd say, we, say Fergus. Well, we were... That's actually, down to you, because you slept with him. <laughs> <laughs> so we are, actually, so I'm friends with Jared Harris. Do you know Jared, Richard? Do you know? Yeah, Jared, yeah. Jared's an amazing actor, Chernobyl and all these things. Played and Moriarty in the Sherlock Holmes movie. Yeah, and his dad's so Richard stuff. Harris, who's... Yeah. Mad Men. My dad played his dad in Mad Men. Right, so I, oh, wow. I get the show, I'm friends with his wife, Allegra, so he, Jared and Allegra start watching Supernatural this, to support me, which is really sweet. But then they just love it and just watch it all regardless <laughs> if I'm in it or not. And Jared was like, I'd love to be in it. And I pitched it to Phil Segrisha. Like at one point it looked like there could have been something. I was like, wouldn't that be like really like a full cycle? It'd be great. Because it would put us all together. It would put us all in a cycle if Jared could he's come in. And he's play is, his he's wonderful. He's one of those actors that is just and beyond. He, would, he did have kind of reddish hair, so it would make sure make sense for Fergus to have a bit of a ginger baby. Let's tell you what happened when I met him. I said, what? hey, Jared, because I know his brothers really well and I knew his dad. I said, uh, my dad played your dad on Mad Men. He goes, I hope he treated you better than he treated me. <laughs> Beat him with a stick. 
Yeah. That was fun. Also Michael Fassbender. Oh yeah. Because they now might have a love scene with Michael Fassbender. Well, because we both look good naked. <laughs> Thank you for your question. Hello. Hi. What's your name? Where are you from? What do you want? My name's Abigail, and, and I'm from Prince George. From where? Prince George. What's that? It's like two hours from here, from plane. Did you walk? I wish. No, I flew. You flew? Yeah. You can fly? Yes, I can. <laughs> Wonders never cease. <laughs> Uh, before I ask my question, I just wanted to say thank you so much for being here. And thank you, and thank you so much for being on this show. And your guys' characters and you as actors and actress has helped me so much through Supernatural because you guys are one of my favorite characters, both of you. So when I was having like Which one's time, better? I love you. You don't have to answer that. I question. love you both. Yes, you do. Okay, equally. Um, but you guys helped me through so many hard days and everything, and any time that I was feeling sad or down, I'd watch episodes or seasons that you guys were in, and it would just perk me up so much. And I wanted to thank you for that. Well it's our pleasure, my darling. You are the sweetest. You are the sweetest. We're happy to have you here. I'm happy to be here. It's my first convention. Is this your first convention? Yeah. I will tell you this. I guarantee you that everybody in this room, including us, has felt the way that you're feeling right now. It's pretty daunting, but the really cool thing, look at all these smiling faces and all these people that understand and all these people that know. Look at this. This is... This is magic. This is magic. The world is a tough, tough place right now. It has been for a while. You know, I've got kids, and, and it's just a hard place. It is not a fun place to be. And then you come to a room like this, and you walk into a room like this, and you hear this stuff, and you look at these faces, some of which I've known for years, some of which are brand new, and you just know, yeah, safe space, happy people, kind people. And uh, you're going to make friends, whether you like it or not. <laughs> but so you're going to find her the rest of the day, poke her, say nice things to her, give her a cookie every now and then, it should be good, right? <laughs> so, did you have a question for Ruth? Well, no, I have a I question. Would, I would like, I just want to, if I, if I can, like, when people say to you um, when you're auditioning for drama college, why do you want to be an actor, why do you want to be an actor, and... I really thought about the question. I really did, and like, I love other actors. I love writers. I love movies. I love to take, I love all these things. Guitar I love, players. <laughs> I love. I love perf performing. I love. I love. And I love. And I thought, why, why, why? But like, I tried to narrow it down, down and down and down. But what? And my company, because you have to come up with a corporation name. My company is kind of what you're talking about, because ultimately, what. The essence of why I try to be in this universe to, in any way, shape, or form is I want to move people. I just even like if I can move the if I can move the, the, the needle one millimeter inside someone. But we have the experience of seeing that work. And, we do. Yeah, and so what you're saying, just thank you because that's why I, that's all that's the only reason I'm here. Is like I just want that thing. Everyone to have that feeling or that experience of being uplifted or moved in some, some way. So thank you, what you said is beautiful. Thank you, you so much. You have helped me grow into a better person. Because <laughs> you saw what not to do. <laughs> well, I don't know about that, but uh, the, the truth is, you did the work, you're here. And so when things look dark or things look difficult, just remember you've done this before, been here before, and there's a lot of people who've been through exactly the same thing and you're not alone, and you'll never be alone. So, there's the truth. It's a harsh world out there, but rooms like this make it all so much better, right? Right, guys? Yeah. Right. Are you gonna be brave and ask her a question, man? No, I'll ask both of you a question. Um, so if you guys could go back to your younger selves, like the first 
like you guys, when you first got the call that you were on Supernatural, if you had 10 minutes with them, what would you tell them about the show, about your life, about the fandom that this would create? What would you tell them? I wouldn't say a thing. I think the discovery of all this has been so delicious. The journey, every moment of the journey, not knowing, has been so delicious and because there's been so many lovely surprises along the way, so many bonuses, so many more episodes than I could have imagined. I, 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 wouldn't, I, I wouldn't spoil it, it's been perfect. Even the hard stuff's been perfect. I wouldn't, I wouldn't whisper a single other thing in my ear. It's been perfect. It's the journey, isn't it? It's the journey, you're right, 100%. It's like, it's, there's, there's no more 15 year television series. There's no more. There's no more of that. It's not going to happen. It's not the way that the, 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 the system works. It's not what happens. And this is a gem. And this is like, I keep seeing people who have just started watching Supernatural. I know. That's the mind blowing thing to me. Netflix. <laughs> Yeah, it's no, a whole new generation, right? Yeah. So you got kids. Yeah, but you, you guys, some of you guys were kids when you first watched it, you know, and then now there's new kids watching it, which I just think is beautiful. But we didn't know what the hell it was when we were doing it. We didn't know where it was going to go when we were doing it. Yeah. It's the I, best experience. I, I, I was warned. Like, even there was an, even a newspaper article, it was like, yeah, if you want job security, you don't want to be in Supernatural. Like, well, You're going to die you. at least twice. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But the, but the truth, yeah, but I would say, watch out for Jared. That's what I would have said. Maybe that. Yeah, that's about the only way. <laughs> so you see the big one, like, oh, 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 you should. That's the guy you watch out for. Yeah, just physically watch out for him, because yeah. he's such a powerful puppy, he might knock you over. Well, you know, the, you know why the whole moose, right, the whole moose thing happened, right, is because they were trying to find a way for me to insult him for, like, I don't know, five episodes, and it's like, Gigantor, Mop-Headed Lumberjack, Giraffe, Jolly Green, that was evil. Right, and this went on for ages, and there's this wonderful moment with Crowley and Dean in my burnt-out mansion, and I literally say, well, you know how good Jensen's timing is, right? He's just so, his timing is so good. I was like, where's your moose? And he goes, oh, you just went to, and that was it. <laughs> because Jared is like, he's got more upper body strength than any person I know. He's got more upper body strength than he knows what to do with. Exactly, and it gets him into more trouble. But as far as I'm concerned, and don't tell him I said this, he's got chicken legs. <laughs> so, some of you are Canadians, right? Yeah. Yeah, some of you are Canadians. And you know what a moose is. A moose, yeah. is a, a moose is a killing machine designed to kill drivers of cars. Yeah. So you have four sticks and two and a half tons of driver killer delivered on sticks. So the car hits the sticks, the sticks fold up, and that thing comes through your windshield. And that's all I can see when I look at it. It's, tr it's true, one time, quite early on, he gave me a hug and I think he thought he was being funny, he just let all the strength go from his legs so that actual thing, I'm not a car <laughs> and we both ended up lying on the ground in the middle of the convention hall I couldn't sustain it Well, if, you're, if you were a car, you'd be a Mini or a little Fiat Topolino <laughs> Okay, I can take that, a little red one Cute Yeah if you, were, you? if you were a car, you'd be a Mustang. No, I've got a car. Call it that. I know. You've got, you've got three cars. Let's move on. True. <laughs> what do you want? <laughs> he looks nervous. I am not nervous. Any question? Oh, I can make you nervous if you really want me to. <laughs> I would tell you to try. Oh, I like him. Oh dear, dear, dear. <laughs> What's the question? The question is, Mr. President, is, are you approving of the Queen Mother's running of hell? The Queen Mother? Well... She was a fly-fishing, gin-drinking horse gambler. Oh, you mean her? <laughs> her indoors. You're the Queen Mother? Oh, that's no, the I'm best picture no, no, I've no, ever I'm seen. I'm just the Queen. <clears throat> oh, yeah, right, right. Who, by the way, has just been replaced by the king, so it's just, uh, you know. Yeah, I think, listen, I'm just, um, I, I love the way the story goes, and even when it was time for me to go and go do the other things I was doing, 
I was just so genuinely happy that my friends got to continue and do what they do best and it was just a wonderful, wonderful experience to watch that's, you guys. That's true. When I told Mark what was going to happen in my story, he was like, I'm so delighted for you. I'm so happy that yeah. you're, that the story Genuinely, because it's, it's a special thing. What do you guys want? Uh, we're just here to do our job, sir. Uh, just move the table. Did you hear her playing your drums? No. No. She played your drums. She was good. What? The hell? She goes, now I understand why you do this. <laughs> this I is, want, I want to say it was not my idea, was it? It was my idea. It was my <laughs> it's a good idea. Yeah, it was a good idea. I was pretty loud. Uh, did you bang them pretty hard? I smashed the shit out <laughs> of them. I bet you did. Crazy. <laughs> so that's what this is. Welcome to my world. So, so, have we hit that time? I think we've hit that time. It's we time for you to say uh, it's time to farewell hit the for now. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, Mark Shepard and Ruth Connell. There they go on the highway back to hell.